Hi, I'm John Hart. and Welcome back to Mr. America Hart. Well, in the training circles, there seems to be a fallacy that gets tossed out quite often. And I see it on my channel a lot because, you know, I do speak quite a bit about high intensity training. It's the type of training that I was raised up on. And I also have trained thousands of people using high intensity training techniques over the last you know, 35, 40 years. And at this point, it should be understood that <laughs> we've had quite a few, both amateur and professional bodybuilders come up through the ranks, as well as a whole bunch of people who have used the techniques in their own training. And in doing so, they have not, or I should say, they have not lived up to the false assumption that high intensity training tears muscles. And what I'm going to give to you today is this. There's the poster child of the dangers of high intensity training. And I say this with all due respect. Dorian Yates, six time Mr. Olympia. Dorian Yates was uh, one of the greatest Mr. Olympias of all time and uh, greatest bodybuilders of all time. And he's constantly pointed at as the guy that is the poster child for the reason why you should not use high intensity training techniques in your training because it will tear muscles and damage bodies, and it will burn out the nervous system. And I, I keep hearing things like that. And so what I'm going to offer to you today is this. Uh, Dorian is an example of a bodybuilder who did tear muscles in the course of his career. And it, he admitted it fully that it happened during his pre-contest training when he was the most drained, fatigued, dehydrated, the leanest state that he would be in throughout the course of his entire year Almost all of his injuries occurred during the last six weeks before a contest. So, this being a fact, what we're left with is let's think about on the higher volume end, what do we have over there? Because that's the safe way to train. And <laughs> here we go. I'm going to fire you off a quick list of 10, 10 times, 10 people, 10 top bodybuilders, two Mr. Olympias who have torn muscles training. We're using high volume training. I'm going to give you two bonus material bodybuilders as well. Again, high volume trainers. And here we go. Number one, 1982 Mr. Olympia, Chris Dickerson. Chris Dickerson, uh, it seems, won the Mr. Olympia with a, not only that, but he won many pro shows with a torn pec and a torn or mal shaped bicep. So you can see in the pictures that he did tear his pec early in his career. And that bicep of his, at least one of them, was just so weird looking, it wasn't even funny. It looked like a bicep tear. So the pec itself, though, was torn. Okay, so we have Chris Dickerson, a well-known high-volume trainer, trainee. He actually, you know, bragged in his uh, uh, articles, he would write, that he would do five times as much work as other bodybuilders would. And that's why he got to where he got, five times as much. Uh, Kevin Lavrone, Kevin Lavrone, I apologize. Kevin Lavrone, Kevin Lavrone, top Mr. Olympia competitor all throughout the 90s, right into the early 2000s. Kevin Lavrone, a great bodybuilder. Uh, apparently, Kevin Lavrone, he also had a couple of torn muscles along the way. Again, a higher volume trainer. Kevin Lavrone, he tore his pec earlier in his career, right when he, well, at the beginning of his pro career, he tore his pec. Um, Came back from that, competed in the Olympia, did fine. Uh, competed in many shows, won many shows, no problem. Uh, continued to train high volume, by the way, and that did not stop him from yet tearing S, his tricep, or his lat. We're not 100% sure, but uh, apparently he heard it doing pull downs, and his tricep and lat, it looks like his tricep, was torn as well. So he had two muscle tears, just like our Mr. Olympia, Chris Dickerson. So I'm moving on now. Another Mr. Olympia, four-time Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler, a self-admitted volume trainer. So Jay Cutler, man, he was one of the best ever, right? Four-time Mr. Olympia. Well, right in the middle of his Mr. Olympia runs, he too tore his bicep. And so that left arm of his, it prevented him from going any further in his Olympia run. Personal. So but let's continue with our list because now we're on one, two, three, four, five. Five. Branch Warren. Branch Warren, he went as high as second in the Mr. Olympia, just like Kevin Lavroni did. Kevin Lavroni, I, I neglected to mention, he took second place multiple times in the, in the Mr. Olympia. 
Branch Warren, he took second place to Jake Cutler in, I believe it was 2009. And man, just an amazing, hardcore, hard training bodybuilder uh, from my home state of Texas. A great, great bodybuilder. Thick, uh, man, great shape to his muscles, the whole thing. And in the course of his career, uh, a torn bicep, a torn tricep, a torn quad. So multiple muscle tears in the course of his uh, course of his career. So again, a higher volume trainer. Uh, boy, I'd like to say he's high intensity because boy, is there some serious high intensity in his training. Uh, really fun to watch. Anyway, Branch Warren. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Branch Warren. So he three tears, three muscle tears. Uh, next, Evan Centopani. Evan Centopani, a national champion. He went on uh, to compete in the New York Pro. He's an East Coast guy. Uh, again, just walking out to his car. I guess he slipped on some ice, tore that quad right off the bone. Another higher volume trainer. I wouldn't exactly say he was the highest volume trainer of all time, but let's just say a higher volume trainer more than high-intensity trainees would do, okay? And Evan, again, great bodybuilder, tore that quad tendon right off and spent a long time in re rehab, physical rehab, physical therapy, and came back and hasn't been quite the same since. So Evan Chantapani, uh, old friend of mine, Lee Priest. Lee Priest, great, great bodybuilder over the years. He's placed many times the top 10 of the Mr. Olympia. He's uh, won IFBB Pro Show. He's done very, very well for himself along the way. He's won the Mr. Universe as well and uh, a top competitor for years throughout the 90s, through the toughest era, I believe, of bodybuilding. So the 1990s. Excuse me again. It's a little bit, ooh, is it warm? So Lee Priest tore his bicep, moving a TV uh, again. Uh, Lee, good friend, friend. I consider him a great friend. Higher volume trainee. He trained with high volume. You know, average 20 sets of body, body part. And uh, moving a TV toward the bicep, right from the shoulder down instead of the elbow up. So uh, another higher volume trainee, torn bicep. Uh, let's see, let's see. Danny Padilla. Danny Padilla. Oh, famous from the golden era. Golden era bodybuilder, Danny Padilla. Danny Padilla uh, from the Arnold era, Arnold Schwarzenegger era, was uh, Mr. Universe, Mr. America, uh, top five in the Mr. Olympia in 1981. So he was just awesome. And, uh, whew, man, he should have won that year. I don't know. That's, that's a whole other video right there. But Danny, uh, in the course of his training, tore a calf muscle. Not major so that you could actually see damage to the calf, but uh, he wrote about how he tore his calf preparing for one of his shows. So higher volume trainee. So, so far, I'm at nine bodybuilders that they should all be poster children for why, high, why you should avoid higher volume training, right? Because it's so dangerous. And then last but not least, I want to put on that list of 10, Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno tore his bicep. Okay, unloading some equipment out the back of a truck. So we have another, admittedly, high-volume trainee from the golden era, Lou Ferrigno. He tore that bicep off the bump, put that thing right back together again, of course, but still a torn bicep. So none of these injuries that I'm mentioning, by the way, are any more or any less gruesome than Dorian Yates' torn bicep and then torn tricep. So let's be clear. None of them are any more or less gruesome. They're all muscle tears, tendon tears. They're all career ending potentially for every one of them. So for a lot of them, it didn't end their career. They kept on going because it was un as unnoticeable uh, as you could imagine. But they did have muscle tears. It didn't detract away from their physique so much. Um, I promised you some bonus material. So I will give you one of them uh, who I, wow. All throughout the 80s, 90s, I loved watching him train at Gold's Gym in Venice. Tom Platz. Tom Platz uh, was the picture of uh, intensity in the gym. So I would say he's about the most intense trainer I've ever seen. But yet, 
he himself would say he was a combination between the old school high volume training and the high intensity training of the Mike Menser style. And he was a cross or a hybrid between the two. It, with that intensity that he fired up, he obviously, with that volume, caused micro damage to the bicep along the way. And he tore that bicep. That was career ending for Tom. He was never the same again after that. He went from 1981 being uh, the, the oof, man, the golden child of bodybuilding, probably the most popular uh, third place winner ever in the Mr. Olympia. Franco Colombo won it that year. Chris Dickerson took second, and Tom Platts took third. And boy, when Tom Platts took third, I think it cemented him as one of the biggest seminar attractions for the next year, right? So, excuse me again. So he went about his business training, high intensity, super high intensity, with a decent amount of volume. And of course, the problem with that is, is you can't combine the two. Uh, eventually, it gets to the point where the wear and tear, even on PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, even on bodybuilding drugs, recovery from those things is not going to be there. And last but not least, the, the one man, the, the greatest of all time, Mr. Olympia, well, tied with Lee Haney, at least, Ronnie Coleman, uh, call him the king. Okay, Ronnie Coleman, eight-time Mr. Olympia, uh, broke his body. Uh, it's debatable whether he tore a lat or tore a part of his tricep. But one thing for sure is, is that in the course of his training, the damage that he did to his lat, his tricep, his spine, from all of that volume. Some people like to say it's from the heavy lifting that he did. But surely the volume contributed to all of those injuries. And you could see uh, to this day that he's still trying to get back to walking, just walking. So there you have it, 10, 10 professional bodybuilders who all had muscle tears specifically. And then two more in there who uh, had muscle tears, questionable muscle tears uh, or injuries of a major, major catastrophic career ending level that all used volume. The lowest volume traded out of the bunch was probably Tom Platts. But the rest of them used high volume, self-admitted high volume training, trainees. So there you have it. So you want to keep saying that Dorian Yates is a good reason not to use high intensity training using one person? One. Over all these years, I, I don't see that. I don't see that. I just named you a dozen of high volume trainers. Good reasons why you shouldn't go down that path, if anything. So that's it for today. So listen, before you go, if you're interested in gaining more, you know, getting some more information about some of the routines that I do, some of the training that I offer, high intensity training routines, as well as training diet exercise, and how to manipulate all of the variables, hmm, variables, you can go to my website, MrAmericaHeart.com, and you will find Physique 101 is probably the best book which combines all of it. Mr. Mr. America, uh, Mr. America Shape Up series is the other book. I'm trying to talk too fast before my lips. The Mr. America Shape Up series is the other book. You can check out uh, at MrAmericaHeart.com, and it's there available in downloads and paperback. And why don't you go ahead and give that a shot and take a look at it. And I appreciate that very much. Off to my left, you're going to see this disc pop up in a moment. That is the subscribe button for my channel. Why don't you go ahead and give that thing a tap. I thank you for it right now. And then down below, off to your left, you're going to see a thumbs up button. That is the like button for this video. And it lets YouTube know that you like my videos and that I should keep on going. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon.